Welcome to Borking and Pop Show. Today we're going to be doing a how to play and play through of Rolling Witchcraft. <laughs> this is a really fun game. It's a fast paced, um, quick game, easy to learn. You're basically just trying to, we're all witches, um, brewing potions with ingredients, which are all right here, these cubes. You're trying to overwhelm your nemesis, which is the person to your right, with too many ingredients on their workbench. So as you can see, um, you start out with a certain amount based on your personality. We're starting with the beginner personality, which is initiate. We all have the exact same card exact same personality. Um, once you play your first game, there's more personalities, then you would deal them out randomly. You deal two to each player, each player picks one, and um, then we, you would all have different personalities with different uh, abilities. So it would be more of a var variable power game that way. But when you're learning the game, it's best to start out with this one. You start out by flipping it over. It tells you how many ingredients you start with on your workbench. So it's one mandrake, which is the white cube, four mushrooms, four spiders, and four frogs. And then you can flip it back over because you won't need that side anymore. And you can see her ability is, before choosing a recipe, you can discard this card to discard your entire hand and draw four new recipe cards. These are your recipe cards. Um, you will be drawing one, a new one each round to add to your hand. Um, but she allows you to just, like if you don't have, if you need to get continually get rid of your ingredients on your workbench to keep from getting overwhelmed because we're just going to be filling our cauldrons and passing it to our nemesis on the right. So um, you need to constantly have a balance and try to use as many of your ingredients as you can because you're going to be getting a lot more from your nemesis passing their cauldron to you. Um, this card here duos as a player aid of the phases, although you really won't need it. It's three steps. It's very easy. Um, um, and then on the other side is the Arcana tracker. And there's three arcanas. There's the cauldron, which is the pink, the book, which is the green one, and the crow, which is the black one. And we actually printed, it doesn't come with this player aid. I, I wish it did, but we found it on BGG. There's lots of resources on BGG where you can get um, people make player aids and rule, they um, alter rule books and things. So it helps you to play the game more seamlessly having these little aids that people took the time to make. So this explains the Arcana. So we printed that out and we're gonna laminate it later. Um, so the cauldron, which is the pink one, you may add one ingredient of any type from the general supply, which is right here, um, directly to your cauldron. So it's as if it was one of the, and I'll explain the output. So it's as if it was an output that you created from producing a potion. So it goes directly from the supply into your cauldron, which is nice. The, I call it the crow, it's a bird. That one, uh, the player may remove up to two ingredients from your workbench. It could be the same or different, but you can, you don't have to, but you can remove up to two. Um, then there's the book. That one allows you to choose any one ingredient from the supply to use to fill an, an ingredient on your potion if, rather than from your workbench. That would be useful if you didn't have that ingredient on your workbench and because you'll get to the point where you'll have five to six po uh, recipes at one time. So it gets more difficult to have enough ingredients to fill all of them. You want to try to fill all of them and there's very creative ways to do that and I'll show you in a minute. But the way the Arcana works, at the top of the cards, the recipe cards, you'll see the little symbols. Each time you see that symbol on your card, you will place that art matching arcana. So that this is the if this was my first recipe card, I would place the book arcana on one. So say I this is my next round, my next recipe card, it has the book and the bird. 
So you move the book by one so it ends up on two and you put the crow on one. Anytime the arcanas reach even numbers, you get to activate this, its ability. So if I wanted to, I could activate the book ability and take one ingredient from the supply and fill a recipe input. So those are very useful. Sometimes you don't use them if, um, if, it, if it's not helpful, you just wouldn't use it. Another thing on the recipe cards, well, let me show you the recipe cards. You could see the, there's an arrow pointing down. So the ingredients on top of the arrow are your input ingredients. These are the ones that come off of your workbench or an output, and I will show you that in a minute. So I I put my frog and my mandrake, and my output is one mandrake and my choice of either a mushroom or a spider. So I'll pick a mushroom, and you would you would pick that depending on how many of your ingredients. Um, you want to try to fill up all the spaces, actually overfill the colors on your Nemesis workbench. So if Quentin had a lot of reds, I'm going to pick red. If he had a lot of blues, I'm going to pick blue because I'm trying to overwhelm him. Because when he gets overwhelmed in a, an ingredient, any that are past the little um, indicators on his workbench go into, he has to give it to me and it goes in my witch's circle. The person that has the five ingredients in their witch's circle first wins the game. Mm -hmm. So another way to use, to fill ingredients for your recipes, say I had two recipe cards out here. I could, make sure you can see that here, I'll put it right here. So this is my output. I can use, I can either put these in the cauldron to give to my nemesis to my right, or I can use that output to, to use on another ingredient and then I could just take one off my workbench and then I would have another output of a black, um, that's sure. called the Heart of Shadows, I think. And say I had, I mean, if I had another recipe out here, I could then use this red. I don't have a mandrake, so I wouldn't be able recipes. to do that. But you wanna keep at, Maneuvering them around, you want to try to complete all your recipe cards because the more ingredients I put in this cauldron, the more likely he's going to get overwhelmed. So it's it's just a game of constant shuffling around of cauldrons and ingredients to see who can collect five first in their witch's circle. Um, another symbol is this little squiggly, kind of reminds me of a seahorse. When you place this card, you can either place it this way or this way. Once you place it, it has to remain that way. So whichever one ingredient is on top, it becomes the input and the ingredients on the bottom are the output. So you can choose which one benefits you the most. Um, so the, and the setup, as you can see, is very easy. You basically just pick your personality, do the corresponding ingredients on your workbench. And then you deal four recipe cards to each player. And here's how the rounds go. How it's very easy. So it's a simultaneous game. There's no taking turns. So each of us at the same time choose a recipe card that we're going to play. And you put it face down. Then simultaneously, we're all going to turn our recipe cards over and resolve our arcana. So oh, on this one, no, I'm just teaching. Oh. So I have the bird and the book. They both go on my space one. Then you begin simultaneously doing your inputs of your ingredients and then collecting your outputs from the general supply. When you're happy with your, you don't collect these until you're done um, completely filling all your spells because you may want to move your outputs to some of the other spells. Um, when you're done, you put the output into the cauldron, you put your input back to the general supply, you pass the cauldron to the person on your right, which is your nemesis. They place it on their workbench. If they can't, don't have any available spaces on their, so say I'm passing Quentin, say Quentin is 
has all of his spaces filled. And I give him two more reds. He would have to give me those to go in my winter circle. Once winter circle. Or sorry, witch's circle. <laughs> so once um if I got five, I would be the winner. Okay, so let me fill up my supply again. Then at the end of the round, after everyone's passed their cauldrons, then you take your hand, you pass it to the left, and everyone draws a new recipe card, and the round just starts over again, um, and you just keep resolving arcana, and you keep playing on the same recipe cards. You, you play on the new one, plus any recipe cards that are already there. So eventually we get up to like five or six recipe cards, it seems, before someone wins the game. So the start, so pretty much you always have four cards when you start the new round. Mm-hmm after you draw the card, the recipe yeah. card, and you just keep the recipe deck here handy. Um, did I miss anything? No. no. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Again, it's all simultaneous. So we're going to pick our... I gotta wait. I gotta wanna see what you're picking. Yeah, and you wanna do it face down because you want, you don't want the people, to other, your nemesis to see what you're doing. So we all turn it over, we resolve our arcana, Okay, then off of my workbench, I'm doing the mandrake and a frog, and I receive an output of a heart of shadows. There's not much you can do in the first round, so I put that on my cauldron. Yeah, these arcane reference player aids we download from bgg.com are very helpful. Yeah, they are. So are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we pass our cauldrons. That's all you gave me is one heart of shadows. It's early in the game. Place those on your workbench. We pass our hand to the left. And we draw another card. Left. Okay. okay. Oh, and you put your inputs into the I get those mixed up because you passed a cold in there. Yeah. All right. So we're on the next round. And some of them, some of your recipe cards do not have an arcana on top. Usually those are the ones that give you a lot more ingredients. Um, so it's kind of a balance, I can guess. Can you do one without finishing the spell? Yeah. If You can still place a recipe card even though you can't complete it. Mm -hmm. And you can still resolve the arcana. You don't have to be able to complete it to place it in your tableau. You ready? You do it upside down, remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Resolve the Arcanas. You gotta do your Arcana. Did yours have Arcana? What? So move your bird. Oh. So, so the bird does, the player may move the two beans from their workbench. And these may be different or same type. Ooh. You don't want to move two blue ones. Okay. You definitely want to move those because you don't want to get overwhelmed. Right. One somewhere. There it goes. Probably dropped on the floor. No, that's in between. She's infamous for dropping stuff on the floor. Okay, <laughs> so I did my inputs. Here's my outputs. So you can see I'm passing Quentin five ingredients, and it just becomes more and more and more as the game goes. Basically, progresses. you just make more. Okay, we put our inputs into the general supply. This game lasts pretty fast. So yeah, it sure. goes really fast. So you can see I'm close to getting overwhelmed on my reds. So I'm going to want to pick a spell right. and my whites. I'm going to want to pick a spell that uses mandrake okay. and mushrooms. The cards. You have ours mixed up. They're always passing around. <laughs> okay. You're never going to keep the same cauldron. They're, they just pass. Oh. Okay, so I need to find a spell that uses mandrakes and definitely uses mushrooms. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I resolved the Arcana, so I get to use the book where I get to pull a recipe from the supply instead of my board. And, 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 and,
powder in his though. They had just I put that green from my Wow. Lots of uh, <laughs> reaching over each other in this game. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So I'm going to be gifting Quentin. Oh, I have been. Oh, we know my mom didn't have any. With all of these arcane symbols. Right? Have fun of this. And you can see Quentin's mm -hmm. going to be overwhelmed with the Heart of Shadows. No. I got rid of just enough I get rid of, of my mushrooms. So I have the first ingredient in my witch's circle. Pass our cards to the left. Draw a card from the recipe book. And remember, we have this ability on our personality card. If I if I don't like the recipes I have in my hand, you can discard this and draw four new ones. I'm gonna be discarding. I like mine. Oh, I'm ready. Anyway. Oh, I'm just gonna move up this. That's all it is. Ah, oh, and benefit. So Anthony discarded his personality. Are these your discards? I'm gonna put them over here so they don't confuse Quinn. All right. Ooh, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to move mine down here so you can see I what I'm doing. Two Ooh, I got that one. one oh, two. I need to resolve my Arcanus. I got a man drink and I get two. I can use it. Two I'm going to do all mine in one turn. I am short of blue on this one, so I can't finish this one, and I don't have enough on my um, output to help me on that, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. overwhelming him with more Hearts of Shadows. You're not going to be able to make all of them in one turn. Sometimes, usually I can, but Anthony's not giving me enough ingredients. <laughs> it's okay. Look at all that I'm giving him. Wow. I did okay. all mine in one. So we're passing our cauldrons. I think Quentin's going to be passing me three hearts of shadows. What? So I got three in my witch's circle. Oh, all no. in one turn. So one more. I need to pass And those. I won the game. <laughs> you need to play a spell that lets you use those. I haven't got any. It's a fair. <laughs> well, use your ability, your card. Okay, I need to get one. This yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, how do you know what I'm doing? I need to overwhelm him. Overwhelm. I'm going to discard my personality. I don't know how to spend that because I like all my cards. I think the game's going to end here. I think a man is going to win. Oh no. She could lose. She may lose.
This is a mana plane, so it's going to take a little bit. I'm trying to decide which one to do. Okay. Ready? Okay, I'm going to go find. Okay, so my cauldron and my book. Ooh, I get to do the book and the cauldron. So the cauldron, I can play any type of ingredient into my cauldron. Let's see if Oh wait, these are my ingredients I never put on my board. No. What? Good. I needed more ingredients. Okay, then I can my book. I can choose any type of ingredient, but I'm gonna wait to do that. So put the red here. Sorry, little guy. It's okay, it's okay. I think it might actually tie. Okay, I've done all the things I can do now. Nope, I'm gonna. Oh, ignore. wait, what? So grab that egg and get yeah, egg. Give him your cauldron. I wonder what happened to Ty. Uh, I have more ingredients than you. But maybe this one. That's it. Oh, wait, I'm only on a four? Yeah. What? Okay, so I have. I overwhelmed Quentin with the Heart of Shadows. I only have half of yours. So I have seven in my Witch's Circle, so I won the game. How many does Anthony have in Witch's Circle? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm <wasn't> lucky. <laughs> well, you're blaming luck. But I really like this game. It's a lot of str a lot of strategy. It seems so simple, but it's a lot of strategy. And we haven't played with the other personalities yet. It'll be even more fun with the other personalities. We were been playing with the beginner game and practicing so we could um, be effective at showing you how to play it. But um, it's definitely a fun game. And Quentin won the first game. I won the second two games. The first game, I will admit, though, I was they weren't playing it to its full potential. So once we all were doing it correctly, where you can use your outputs and your workbench, it's that's when it becomes more um, competitive and more strategic. You've got to use your outputs effectively to fill more recipes. That's how you fill all of them. And the arcana. Yes, um, and the arcana really helps. I only well. got the arcana one time. So it's there's a lot of even though it's such a simple game, there's a lot of strategy to it. So. We will put the product link in the description if you want to check this out. It's called Whirling Witchcraft by A AEG. Um, definitely you should check this out. It's a very quick, fun, easy to learn, easy to set up game. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you're not already, we'd appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel because we put out a lot of great content. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!